Hello and welcome to episode 27 of Creative Walks. My name is Pedro Bonato and today I am very excited because I got on the mail a Christmas gift that I wanted for a very, very long time. It is my first DNA test kit. So if you don't know, these uh, tests, they are able to decode your genetic code and they can provide a lot of information about your health, but what I'm most interested in is what they can tell about your ancestors, where they came from and what kind of percentages of different populations you have in your DNA. This technology is actually based on the work of the Human Genome Project and uh, over the past 20, 30 years, the techniques have advanced to so much and the price has come so much down that it can be affordable for lots and lots of people. The test is actually pretty simple. I did it just a few hours ago. You swap with this cotton swipe inside your cheeks, one for each side, and then you put it on a container and you close it and you send it to be analyzed on a lab and it will break down your DNA and give this file with all your genetic makeup. It's something like this was, I think, not even possible 30 years ago. And I think even 20 years ago, the cost to do a test like this would be $1 million per test. And today it's sort of like in the range between 50 and $200, depending on which company you you choose even that like that you can swap the insides of your cheeks and i'm sure they can do it with hairs or skin or blood or any kind of a, a cell and it's so fascinating that hidden in every cell of your body is the whole story of our common human ancestry and basically the story of your ancestors are locked inside all these cells and that's kind of fascinating and because of the advantages of today's science and all the advances in technology that we're able to do over the last 20 30 years there is this whole new revolution where you're able to reconstruct part of your personal history and of those that came before us it's like you have genetics linked to history, linked to population studies, and scientists trace migration patterns throughout different lands and different times, and they're looking for clues for who mixed with who. For this test that I did today, I am using a company called MyHeritage. I have no relationship with them, but the main reason I chose them is that they do a lot of work also with the family trees and ancestor researches made uh, based on documents. And one practical reason was that since I'm in Ukraine, not all companies ship to Ukraine. So they actually ship worldwide and they thought that was nice. So uh, I decided to go with them. There are, however, other big companies like 23andMe and Ancestry.com and uh, I found out about one that seems very nice too called My Living DNA. And if you do a little Google search, you will find all the companies that are available and you can check them for yourself. Uh, I'm not doing an ad or anything and they each one has their own advantages and disadvantages, but independently, whichever you choose, I would highly recommend that you go ahead and do the service and uh, try to find out more about your heritage. I will be still waiting for my results. It takes about two to three weeks to ship back to the US where the lab is. And then it takes about four to six weeks for the results to come in. But so let me talk to you a little bit about why I'm interested in this and um, what I intend to get out of it and hopefully give some inspiration for you as well. Uh, I was interested in taking this test for about one or two years. Uh, one year for sure, because it will not only uh, applicate, placate my curiosity about my heritage it itself, but it's because it's deeply tied to my work in photography and in world music. And it will actually serve at the, as the basis of a new art project that I'm working on, but that will be a story for another day because I 
can't really say anything about that project just yet. So this is just a little tease. Um, but what these tests show again and again, and if you do a little search on YouTube, you'll find people talking about the surprise they have when they see the results. Because what you think your heritage is, is very often not what it actually is. For example, as far as I know, my great-great-grandfathers, they came to the south of Brazil at the end of the 19th century. And they came from Italy, Spain, Portugal, and Germany. Um, but that's where the story ends for me, because we don't really have many records. Most of those people, they were farmers or they came on boats and they are not many records of all those things and some of them couldn't even read or write so those uh, that information has been lost so it's very easy to forget even in like two or three generations what our pam family past was and how many people actually identify themselves with a specific country or a specific ethnic group and there is so much xenophobia and nationalism and a lot of things that come from misguided notions of how mixed we are. Because the only thing pure that exists, both in art and in our common humanity, is the mixture. And the truth is that people migrate. They fall in love across borders and across cultures. And part of our common history, and I think part of all our perspectives come from this migration and this falling love with people from different places and cultures created in different times and different places. And I think it's fascinating to explore our origins, not only for what we will learn about our ancestors, but also to put us in the context of the human drama, the human history and the vast oceans of time that separate the world's greatest ideas like writing in Mesopotamia to all those things that trickle down to us and that make our culture today. That idea has inspired me so much, as you can probably hear in my voice, that much of my work in music and in photography has been directly inspired by this understanding that we all share these aspects created by the stories and the creativity of people from all over the world. So I decided to finally get this test done and it will be the first step on the beginning of this new project that I was telling you about and just get the ball rolling and get it started because I have been thinking about this for a long time and doing research and preparing and doing all sorts of things about it, but you need to actually start. And in this case, it will require, it's a project that will require me to go way, way, way beyond my current capabilities. And that's actually what's so exciting about it. So I learned something kind of obvious today also but it's quite inspiring and I wanted to share with you, which is this idea that if you were alive, there is a continuous, unbroken chain of living things, of life forms that survived and evolved over 4 billion years since the beginning of life. And you are the latest invention and iteration of this drama. It's a 4 billion year history. We usually think of our ancestors or grandfathers, grandmothers, or maybe like, I don't know, we can trace back to Egyptians or cavemen. And sometimes we go a little bit further and we know that we actually came, have common ancestors with great apes and then with other mammals and so on. But if you go back, you are the direct uh, product that came from single-celled organisms in the beginning of life and then through fish or dinosaurs or mammals or apes and then to the human species and now you and me. So I thought it would be cool to share with you here on Creative Walks this uh, beginning of this new journey and I think it's very much in line with the idea of this uh, project of uh, this new podcast because as artists and as human beings we walk 
and we sail through these uncharted territories, both of lands and of ideas, to try to find new life and new places and new objects of art. So with that, I'll talk to you tomorrow.